Hi, this is episode 79 of Crondos. I'm your host, Jordan Hudgens. I'm a Ruby dev and the CTO of the DevCamp platform. Since launching Crondos, I've created multiple posts on binary search trees, including a binary search tree tutorial and how to create a binary search tree from an array. You can check those out in the show notes if you want to reference those guides. In this guide, I'm going to help you answer the coding interview question of why do binary search trees have to be balanced? Let's first walk through a quick review of what a binary search tree is if you're still a little bit rusty on the topic. A binary search tree is a data structure that allows a program to quickly search through a data set to find a value. So it looks something like this and has three key rules associated with it, including each node has the ability to have at most two child nodes, which is where it gets a name binary, meaning two. The child node on the left has to be less than the parent node. Lastly, the child node on the right has to be greater than or equal to the parent node. This configuration enables a great performance that binary search trees have. Because you get to traverse a tree, you're able to break the data collection into smaller and smaller pieces, allowing a program to ignore irrelevant data. So with that review under our belts, let's discuss what it means for a binary search tree to be balanced. In this image, we have a small but balanced binary search tree. This tree is considered balanced because the difference between the heights of the left subtree and the right subtree is not more than one. If that's a little fuzzy, simply look at the right hand side of the tree. Notice how the left hand side is only one leaf taller than the right. That means that the tree is balanced. Now let's take a look at what an unbalanced binary search tree looks like. Notice how this tree only has a right hand side. This doesn't even really look like a tree. However, technically this tree's right hand side is six leaves taller than the left hand side. Consequently, this tree is unbalanced. So why do binary search trees have to be balanced? I think the best way to understand the importance is to walk through a base case. And remember that the key reason why a binary search tree offers such great performance is because it allows us to ignore irrelevant values, thus decreasing the number of comparisons a program has to perform in order to find a data element. Let's look at the value 20 in our unbalanced tree. You'll notice that this would take seven comparisons to find the value. Finally, let's search for the value 20 in our balanced tree. If you count the comparisons, you'll see that it would only take three hops or three comparisons. This means that our search performance increased by over 50% by having a balanced tree compared with an unbalanced structure. This may not seem like a huge deal for such a small data set. However, what if you had millions of elements that you had to search for? The performance gains of a binary search tree are quite significant, which is one of the reasons why binary search trees are considered such a vital tool for computer science and why I've covered it multiple times throughout the Crondos episodes. With your understanding of why binary search trees need to be balanced, what happens when you have a tree that's not balanced? There are a number of algorithms you can use to remedy the issue. Some of the most popular algorithms are red-black trees and AVL trees. Both of these data structures force a tree to remain balanced and therefore can guarantee search performance. There have been complete chapters of textbooks dedicated to these algorithms, so it'd be out of scope to cover them in this guide. However, I place links in the show notes to tutorials that can help walk you through them if you want to deepen your knowledge on the subject. I hope that this has been a helpful guide for answering the interview question of why do binary search trees have to be balanced? And good luck with the coding interview.